Microsoft have just released a brand new product in the data space called Microsoft Fabric. Let's discuss what this actually is and why we now have this as our main data platform in the Microsoft universe. Microsoft Fabric is a brand new or refreshed data platform from Microsoft, where they're bringing a range of features that already exist or a range of technologies and tools that already exist into one new platform, enabling us in this new era of AI. Some of these tools have used to exist in the Azure platform, and then they've also integrated Power BI uh, into it and have it sitting on a new data layer, which they're calling One Lake. I think they're doing this for a, a few reasons, and we will, we will get into those uh, in a second. But the biggest reason for these changes is really the democratization of technologies and uh, tools and languages uh, with the emergence of AI. And I think this is Microsoft really getting ready for that or, or getting ahead of uh, th things that are evolving very fast right now and are likely to um, evolve faster in the, in the future. So they've decided to bring a lot of uh, existing high quality technology into one platform, make it easily accessible uh, and easily uh, used by a whole lot more people than would have used it in the past. The evolution of Microsoft Fabric is a bit confusing in my own personal eyes. And maybe something bigger is happening here than we really know. But Power BI is already a very successful product. And they've now integrated it into a much larger product. They've almost deprioritized it a little bit because they've now added it as just one of many tools uh, within this new Fabric brand. Really, what I think is happening is that AI has evolved so much and democratized so many tools. Microsoft just want to get this into an environment where many more people can get access and feel comfortable within these uh, within these tools. And those those are things you know like data engineering, uh, data um, ETL tools, data science tools, uh, and and obviously data analytics tools like um, we have with 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 Power BI. So to me, it's all about this new wave of AIs and. A lot of these tools are going to be coupled with what Microsoft are calling co-pilots. Uh, and you know, I think it's just going to make them all far easier to use, right? Also, I think there's a brand new uh, data layer where you'll be able to aggregate data far easier into one environment uh, and then be able to call it into all of these different um, data tools that sit above it um, that we've got within Microsoft Fabric now. We look here at what is included in Microsoft Fabric. We see tools that have already existed within the Azure universe, and then we have Power BI sitting on top this, of this one like foundational data land, right? And so the idea is that within this one lake, which is basically a name or branding for a, a data lake, is you just pile data, just dump data into this one area. And then the idea is utilizing all these tools, you can then engineer it and architect it and pipe it into any number of different uh, tools, but also um, areas where people within organizations uh, are viewing and consuming things like Microsoft Teams and Outlook and PowerPoint and so on and so forth, all of the, all of the things in the Microsoft universe. So within, within Fabric specifically, we have Data Factory, Synapse Data Engineering, Synapse Data Warehousing, Synapse Data Science, Synapse Real-Time Analytics, and then we have Power BI. And so all of these combined just enable you to really supercharge what you do with your data, right? Um, historically, you know, a, a lot of us would be were, were very familiar with the Power BI environment where we could do a lot of analysis, but there is actually a lot more that you can do. There's a lot of different, uh, there's far more different ways that you can actually analyze data and view data and consume it. Um, and so, you know, some of these are enabling that in new and different ways uh, that uh, I think are going to be uh, totally democratized with what we can do with co-pilots and, and AI technologies that are that are already here and um, also coming very, very soon. One Lake is being described as the OneDrive for your data. Okay, so just think about where data appears and is created throughout 
your entire organization or just just anywhere right within within any type of organization or company instead of having it just sitting in different uh, locations like in excel or within a data warehouse or within a, a SaaS application the idea is uh, you know it just there's a lot of friction in terms of getting that data into a position where you can consume it in a in a in a very um, uh, efficient manner, and so the idea is with this one link is you just pile data all into this one place, and then it's easily accessible from your computer, from your um, from your Power BI experience, from your data science uh, Synapse data science experience, so on and so forth. Right? It just makes it uh, supposedly makes it far more easy, like far easier to go and find and manage and um, you know ultimately go and analyze and get value from your data that's the whole idea here with the one lake uh, and um, yeah there's there's significant potential for simplification and uh, just making analytics more seamless from uh, getting the raw data all the way up to how someone consumes it within microsoft teams for example data factory is an interesting one for me because I think that within the Power BI experience historically, we were getting a lot of this functionality. We were getting data flows and we were getting data marts. Um, they, were, they were on preview for a long time, but it seems now there looks like Microsoft are trying to bundle this in, that functionality in under Data Factory, right? So to me, there's a little bit of duplication here. Maybe, um, maybe they're going to break out data flows and data marts from what was once going to be within Power BI. They're going to break it out into a separate area and Power BI is just going to be this visualization layer. But that is basically what Data Factory enables, right? It's that the data pipelines, the ETL, where you can uh, go and grab the data and then pipe it into somewhere else. You can trans and, and transform it and clean it and optimize it on the way. Um, and I always refer to these as data pipelines, um, ways to ways to engineer your data into the optimal format for further further analysis. So that's what I think is um, the positioning of, of Data Factory going forward. Synapse Data Engineering is a bit of a confusing one for me. It seems to bundle a few things that we can do in, in a lot of other tools, like um, organize a data warehouse, build a BI notebook, um, build some data pipelines, uh, and just generally engineer and organize your data. So to me, you could do this um, reasonably well in other, uh, in other, in other tools, uh, but maybe this just brings a bit more uh, enterprise readiness to all of those things uh, together, you know, a way to manage all of those in, in one particular area uh, versus having to go from one tool to another tool. Um, yeah, and I think bringing it under Microsoft Fabric does, um, does simplify it a little bit. Um, if you want to uh, build more, you know, big data solutions or more heavy uh, enterprise ready type solutions when you're dealing with, you know, millions and millions and millions of rows of data. So, um, so that's where my, my thoughts are at on this one. Um, you know, it feels like it's just sort of bringing a, a few things together to, to make it a bit more productionized uh, within, within an enterprise environment. Synapse Data Science to me feels like a way to bring data science notebooks and data science uh, analysis to the masses. Um, one thing that is absolutely true with a lot of these new AI developments and also co-pilots is that there is a massive democratization in what can be achieved from the from a regular data analyst. Like if you can use Excel, you can literally become a data scientist now. Uh, and the AIs are enabling that. And so uh, integrating um, new ways of analyzing data, building models, uh, using BI notebooks, uh, I think is an exciting evolution for anyone in the data space. And I think that's why including Synapse Data Science um, has been, uh, been, made, been, been made here so that we can you know, not only find um, analysis using dashboards or with Power BI, we can also find it um, and build upon our, our data sets uh, in a far uh, more varied way um, using data science techniques um, because they're just so much more achievable to do now. You know, it's, it's, it's quite phenomenal what is actually possible. So, you know, I'm excited to um, dig into this more myself, you know, to, to, uh, to really see the capabilities of uh, what we can do as a, as a new data scientist. 
one of the hardest things to get to uh, to do in the analytics world is to do real time analytics. So it's exciting to see a option for um, us around doing this at, at at scale and also just making it making it more achievable uh, for 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 everyone. You know, one of the one of the hardest things with say Power BI was you know setting up your data refreshes and uh, making sure that they happened in a um, efficient manner. And so the idea of democratizing real time analytics, where you could connect up, up analysis to what's going on on your website or um, security um, type um, applications that you might want to build, you know, all all of that I think is um, opening up brand new opportunities for us as uh, as analysts. And you know, seeing this integrated into the Microsoft um, fabric. Uh, is to me a move in a, a really positive direction, opening up just so many more opportunities, so many more pieces of analysis, so much more uh, consumer outputs that we can develop to add value, to add value to um, management, to add value to organizations, and ultimately ourselves as well. Synapse Data Warehouse, to me, is a game breaking out functionality that it looks like looked like was going to be built into power bi initially uh, initially this was going to be the back end of the the data marts feature but it looks like they're breaking it out now um and and putting it in its own um own particular area within microsoft fabric uh, i think this is you know again to for, for those who need to develop more enterprise ready models um across across organizations um just to make that more clear cut more more easier to implement. Uh, and also, I think there's probably more functionality that can be added to the specifically rather than packaging it all in one application with Power BI. You know, potentially with AI integrations, just creating data warehouses could be made remarkably easy. Uh, and, you know, having it in its own environment um, and own UI experience um, is probably a, a better way to go from, from my Microsoft's perspective, so that's why they've um, broken it out as a separate thing. Why is Power BI in this is a really good question. Why was a lot of this functional functionality not just built into Power BI? Why, it's a it's a very good question, right? Like why why do we need something new? I have a feeling that the way we analyze data is fundamentally going to change quicker than we know. And I have a feeling that the way we've always done it in Power BI might be changing very fast. Uh, I think the co-pilots uh, and AI integrations that are coming uh, are really going to change everything. It's going to change how we create insights, the speed and, and, and our, you know, speed we do it at, the productivity that we have within, within the, this environment. And I think that's why they've decided to make a bit of a change and almost uh, deprioritize Power BI. There may be other reasons, but that's just um, just my my feeling on on a on a few bringing a few key themes together uh, on this. To me, Power BI is very likely to become just a dashboard visualization layer, um, supported by AIs doing a lot of the the logic and um, uh, and you know, evaluating of our of our data. That's, that's that's what I I think is coming in the future. It's not it's not here right now, so nothing really changes there but i feel like that is probably where things are going and microsoft are are probably just getting ahead of um of what they are seeing and behind the scenes before they've you know released it to to us um the biggest change that i've mentioned is just the complete democratization of what is actually possible you know there is so much more possible than has ever been um before and you know we using using ai technology we will just be able to you know write python write sql write r write um, dax write power query m code you know all of these things we can write so easily now and um being able to place all of that tooling in front you know in one package that we can access very easily and it's and it's um you know very achievable for the everyday user i think is a real positive and that's what that's what we can kind of um, see from the moves that that Microsoft are making here. What I think is coming next is going to fundamentally change the way we work and analyze with uh, with, with with data. 
Um, I've I've had a look at a number of examples. I, I personally haven't been able to use them that much just yet. I haven't used Copilot. I haven't used Code Interpreter from ChatGPT. But I've seen enough to know that things are are fundamentally changing. And Microsoft with Fabric are trying to, I think, empower that change, but also position themselves um, from what, you know, reposition themselves or refresh themselves from ways things were done historically to the way things are going to be done going forward. Um, I think I think things are, are, are really going to change uh, quite quickly. But I think they're also going to all change for the positive. You know, I don't see much negative here. Yes, there's a lot of change. Um, but change is, you know, is is constant, right? And it's it's just happening at a greater speed right now. You know, I think I think AI, this AI technology, these large language models, they can they can compute, they can they can run logic that is is just mind blowing. And I think that as soon as they can access entire data sets um, that you put into this one lake, uh, that they'll be able to create insights very fast and be able to showcase them in many area like many areas we work in day to day right you know i i think finally we might see the um potential of uh, the natural language applications that microsoft have always tried to promote in their products i think we might actually see them you know become reality where we might be able to be in our outlook and ask a question we might be able to be in microsoft teams and ask a question and just get an answer and a chart and a visualization straight away you know and we'll be able to analyze things at much greater volume that we have in the past right there's, you know, there, there is many ways to analyze data. It doesn't all have to be in a dashboard and it doesn't have to all be done in DAX. You know, there is, there is Python, there is SQL, there is, there is numerous ways that you can, you can find analysis and create insights. Um, and, you know, I think, I think this is just a movement in that direction. And, you know, from my perspective, I'm just incredibly excited. I can, you can do so much more uh, and you can be so much more productive. So, so hopefully, um, you know, you're as excited as me about, uh, about this evolution. Okay, everyone, that is my take. And hopefully that's given some food for thought uh, around what Microsoft Fabric is, why it's here, and what to expect in the future. Um, I'll definitely be creating um, more content on this you know, very soon as, we, as, as, as things evolve. We're still you know, really just on preview here. Uh, things are moving quite, uh, quite quickly. Uh, and you know, just, just the way we analyze data is fundamentally changing, as I mentioned. And I think um, that just embracing it is probably the key. Is it is it is the key here? It is the key to to really embrace and evolve uh, as um, as our landscape is evolving um, as well. So, yeah. So jump on board and uh, get excited about what's possible, uh, and then you know, hopefully we can support, uh, continue to support, and I can continue to support um, this uh, this this change and this evolution as it's happening uh, in front of our eyes.